Right, let's do this. Hello, YouTubers. This is Anubifier. Today is Wednesday, the 2nd of February, 2052. Last week was to be the first week that the roadmap was to be updated for this year after CIG got back. Jake posted at the 11th hour that there would be a delay of seven days, which is that day, today. So we have an update. After reading it, I'm pretty sure that some of you are going to make pretty salty videos. That's not what I care about, and that's not why I want you to come here. So, I present information and some opinions, but ultimately it's up to you to comment in the comments. Let me know what you think. So let me break down Jake's post. I have it linked for you in the description. Jake began with a history of the roadmap, roadmap, which launched in 2020, which was the one that took eight months to be created, populated, and such broken down into release view and progress tracker. The release view most resembles the quarterly view that we'd had before. They went into staggered development. And then the progress tracker is meant to be an even more detailed view. It's basically a simple Gantt chart, like what a project manager might use. And to be fair, CIG probably tracks their own progress on a similar style. This chart is very flexible despite having a lot of information on it. In my opinion, it's still lacking a level of fidelity that I would personally like to see, but I'm not complaining. Jake said that when they remade the public roadmap in 2020, the goal was to truly lift the veil on development and show the progress to the entire community, right down to all 50 development teams, to each developer on specific teams, so that we could see every single thing that they're working on for a full 12 months on development. But blah, 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 blah. There's a lot more words there. But then he continued that because the focus is very vocally shifting from development to progress, they also intentionally decided to minimize the importance of the release view, which is the four quarterly chart. They no longer want to do that, and they want us to focus on the other one. So he said that that was a flaw in the old public roadmap, and that unintentionally told us all that mattered. But that's not the story. So all of that's to say that what they want to do is updates to the progress tracker only. And it also seems as if all major updates may only extend one month into this release view in the future. Jake continues, in hindsight, after living with this new public roadmap for the last six quarters, they've come to realize that it was actually a mistake. It puts far too much attention on features and it has a high probability of shifting around, which results in us getting pissed off and lighting stuff on fire and flipping tables over because of the fluidity of development, as he says, is fluid, right? So tentative stuff goes on this roadmap and then we look at it and we think it's like locked down. And then when it disappears, because it should, because that's what the caveat says is that things will move and then everyone gets pissed off. There's drama and it's negative, right? It's supposed to be positive. So rather than continuing to display the release projections that carry a high percentage of chance of moving, they're going to no longer show them. He said that teams are being moved away from the PU to be integrated into Squadron 42 first and then migrated over to the Persistent Universe when it has the most benefit. He said that this has two folds. Squadron 42 will benefit greatly from the additional resources and dedicated focus. Duh. And the Persistent Universe will see features come online more complete and in a more polished state. As the process of migrating these features into the PU is finalized, they're going to be temporarily removing some of the following cards. Here we go. Player interaction experience, FPS radar and scanning, hacking tech, EVA tier 2, 0G push-pull is gone. Again, this is like the 30th time it's been taken off. Persistent hangers, hangar manager app, Miss Hull C, NPC taxi mission level 0, pirate swarm and vandal swarm improvements, but they are adding a coffee shop vendor. So area 18 is going to be getting a new interactable coffee shop. The AI will feed you coffee when you ask for it. But they've also added things to the progress tracker, which is good. So they put the Argo SRV on. They put the Grey Cat mining drone. They put a hospital surgeon on there, which is going to be at Orson first. There's a military multi-tool, which is for squadron. They're going to add AI. They can use an arcade machine. They're going to put some optimizations in the AI so that the systems can be used at a reduced load. They list updates to the modular shaders to optimize the visuals. They're going to put more work into SOCS, the replication layer, and the entity graph for persistent storage. There's work on a dedicated crash recovery system, long-term persistence to support the new database for inventory. They're adding wheeled vehicle physics improvements, reputation V2, and work to allow the AI to look more directly at you and in a more believable way. Jake finished up by saying that persistent habs are being added back to the tracker. That's it, right? A roadmap, roadmap refactor. Post what you think in the comments. I'm going to investigate this a lot more to see what kind of long-term impact this may have on our transparency and our tracking. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. 
Your support is critical for the growth of the channel, so if you like the video and you like this channel's no-bullshit approach, please share it with your friends and tell others. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.